Hello YouTube stackers, this is ST with Silver Stacking 101, where we always believe in staying stacked and packed. Stack with silver, gold, food, ammo, and packed with the means necessary to defend our stack. There is a study out of New York State which challenges many of our preconceptions of the behavior of COVID. Why is this important? because our economic response has been predicated on the reported understanding of COVID, which is flawed. Earlier last week, I read a similar story with the same conclusions out of California. I did not come on and report that story because I had some questions about the methods used. Not that I'm saying they use bad methods, I just could not find how they conducted the study. Governor Cuomo of New York, and I'm going to give credit where credit's due, gave a press conference at the end of last week outlining the results of the study of New York. A link to the video of the press conference is going to be in the description to this video. He did a good job. Here's what they did. New York did a sampling at big box stores and grocery stores of 3,000 people. Granted, that's a small sample for such a large population as the state of New York. The sample included people at least 18 years of age, but not too many over 74 because those people are not out and about. So that's one potential flaw in the study. Governor Cuomo highlights that, and he's correct. Before this study, we have been calculating the mortality of COVID based on the number of diagnosed cases. But we know that the severity of COVID ranges from an annoying cold all the way to death. Many people have gotten it and not sought treatment. The bad news is we have more cases than what's reported. The good news is, is when we analyze those cases, their mortality rate drastically drops. What New York found was in New York City, 21% of the population, according to this study, has antibodies for COVID. Less dense, densely populated areas, those numbers decline. Upstate New York, very rural, had a 3%. But that tells us a few things. Number one, COVID has been here much longer than initially believed, which seems to jive with some anecdotal evidence. Not long after this started in the United States, the governor of Louisiana, which was particularly hard hit with diagnosed cases, blamed um, the outbreak in Louisiana, the severity of it, on Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras was the last week of February. For it to spread at Mardi Gras, and he's probably right, that's where it spread and made Louisiana a hot spot, it would mean COVID was here far longer than what we really thought. Same thing with the cases in New York. Now, cut through some numbers in case you don't watch the video I put the link to. When we analyze the cases of people that's had it, either they were asymptomatic or they have mild symptoms and didn't seek treatment, the mortality rate drops to 0.5%. The flu is 0.1%. COVID is definitely more dangerous than the flu. We know that 0.5% is an artificially low number because we had some unexplained deaths that had they occurred after March 1 would have been linked to COVID. But certainly the mortality rate is far less than what we were initially, we were initially led to believe. 
because we were only counting people sick enough to get treatment and the mortality of those people. Also, another important takeaway from this, COVID gave the appearance of spreading more rapidly than what it in fact is doing. If we go back, it's been here longer, so that means the spread is slower. No one had di been diagnosed prior to March 1, and suddenly so many cases are coming in because they started looking for it. But it definitely predated March 1, probably predated February 1. There is even a chance it started in 2019 in the United States. Another takeaway from this is much of the damage was done prior to lockdowns. Much of the spread had already happened. It became impossible to contain it with lockdowns. We're locking down our economy for no reason. We were locking it down based on the data we were working with. And I'm not blaming the people back in March. They, you, one works with the numbers one has. But now we're starting to, and I'm talking about here in the United States, I'm gonna start laying some blame in just a second. But the ones, they were working with the numbers they had, now we're getting better numbers, and I don't claim to know anything about medical stuff, but I do understand statistics and data analytics. So we can start looking at the behavior of this through the numbers and start inferring what it has done and it's going to do. Now, what's important about the New York study is it confirms a lot of anecdotal evidence that didn't jive with the understanding we were working off of. This explains a whole lot. Not trying to get political here, but I'm gonna throw one thing in. Donald Trump, President Trump, got some grief because he criticized the World Health Organization. This went through other countries before it got here. This data should have been already generated on the behavior. So what does the World Health Organization do besides cash checks? I don't know. Certainly not data analytics. This was not that difficult of a task, but it changes our whole conception of what COVID actually does. Someone else I'm gonna throw under the bus, and I don't wanna throw these people under the bus, but I got to. Our intelligence community. This started in China. It went through Iran before it came here. These are countries we got eyeballs on. Why wasn't this picked up with signal intelligence and human intelligence? Certainly there was an aberration within their society. I know during the Cold War, our intelligence community had a better estimate of the Soviet grain harvest than the Soviets did. Why this was missed, as much as we spend spying, I do not know. Maybe if they spend a little less time spying on American citizens and started spying on stuff that can hurt American citizens, might be a little bit better off on that one. And I, there are a lot of people in the intelligence community that are patriots, but this is definitely an intelligence failure. We have based our response on flawed premises. The new data is challenging those premises. We are now faced with a clicking, a ticking clock. As I went over on a video at the end of last week, we're looking at a full-blown economic depression. Tomorrow's video, I'm going to highlight what a White House economic advisor said over the weekend, and he's the first person I've heard to use the D word, depression, and we'll go over that. Let me know what you think. By the way, watch that video, Go Governor Cuomo. You got to give credit where credit's due. He did an outstanding job in the video. Now, whether he takes the results and translates that into positive policies, that's another story. But certainly his interpretation of the data seems to be spot on. And 
the study has some flaws in it, but still we're not going to see a massive change in the numbers. Some of the data certainly could be shored up, but it's a great starting point. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? Let me know what you think and why you think it. Please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And remember, stay stat and pat because we need it now.